This is what Paul wrote to them. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. I'm going to say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. I mean, that's, none of us get anxious, do we ever, about things. So, you know, that doesn't really apply to us. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And then he goes on. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever is right, whatever's pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And then he says, whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Just an interesting aside, you know, when that little reading ends, Paul says, after having encouraged them in their prayer life, he then says to the Philippian church, by the way, if you've heard anything good from me, put it into practice. Uh, and one of the, th the intriguing thoughts for me about prayer is that often when I pray for something, it's not just that I'm partnering with, with God in that prayer or actually joining with others in praying for it. It's that I open myself up to the possibility that God may say, now you're praying for this, why don't you do something about it? If every Christian, all that they did was that they prayed about poverty in the world or the fact that there were no toilets in large parts of, of the globe, if all we did was pray about it, nothing would change. It's that when people pray, often they then put into practice what they are praying about. So challenge number one, what are you praying about? What are you partnering with God about in prayer that this week you might do something about? To be the answer to your own prayers. Paul said, there's all this stuff about praying, but Whatever you've seen or learnt, why not put it into practice? And then the God of peace will be with you. I think if more Christians put into practice what we're called to, to believe in, maybe we might experience more peace. So here is what this Bible passage seems to say to us about a people who petition, who pray, who partner with God. Number one is, is this. It's, and it's in the mnemonic acts. And the first one of those is adoration. I love that in Psalm 48, it says this, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. We adore Jesus because he is worthy. We worship because he is worth it. And so we worship. We adore. I want to suggest this week in our prayer life that we might Use this little mnemonic. And maybe I know that some of you will be using it already. It's familiar to some, I'm sure. Acts, adoration. Start with, Lord, I love you. Thank you that you love me. I, I love you, Lord. You are worthy of praise. You're worth, worth it. Thank you that you saved me. Adoration is a great place to begin. In our petition, in our praying, why not begin this week with some adoration? Even if we spend a few minutes just saying, Lord, I love you. And wait and see what comes to mind, what the Lord says. Amazing things will happen. Secondly, in this passage. Or secondly, in this living a life of prayer thing, this prayer and petition. Is confession. In 1 John 1, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't know whether this is part of your daily prayer pattern. I think for some, it may be too much a part of your daily prayer pattern. 
might I suggest some of us possibly just start and stop with confession. And often that confession goes like this, Lord, I'm rubbish. I haven't done anything good. I haven't thought any great things. I haven't done this. I haven't moved that. I haven't, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes when our confession is the beginning and the end, we end up having an imbalanced prayer life. But in the context of Acts, I think confession is vital. Lord, I am weak and you are strong. Lord, I mess up and you heal. Lord, I'm, it's not about me, it's about you. Confession is part of the Christian journey of prayer. So again, in our prayer life this week, what about acts? Adoration, Lord, I love you. Confession, Lord, I've messed up or I've missed an opportunity or whatever it may be. And thirdly, as part of our ongoing prayer life, thanksgiving. And here it is in Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. If you want a top tip from me, I would say this. I've learned to pray God's promises. What does God say about himself, who he is and what he's doing? And to start with praying those kind of prayers. Start with the promises of God. Start with thanksgiving. And maybe start a thanks journal. Something that reminds you of what you're thankful for. Psychologists will tell you that thankful people end up being more whole people. And the journey of living life well is to live a life that starts with thank you. So I wonder at the top of your head now, what are you thankful for? What are the things that you're most grateful for? Who are you grateful for? What can you say thank you for to Jesus? And what about starting a thanks journal or writing something in an app? Or maybe even using in you version the prayer part of the app. Has anybody been using that? I love that every day. I know Tom mentioned last week Lexio 365, which has been part of the 24-7, which is brilliant. If you haven't got it, download it. Um, when you're checking out the, the 24-7 website, use that app. It is phenomenal. And over 500 million people have downloaded the YouVersion app. And not simply Bible passages to read through, but there is a little reading plans that you can use. I've been doing some of those, some devotional plans. And within it as well, a little moment when you can just pray. You can click on a prayer, you can swipe left, and you can move to the next bit. It is a really good way to build a rhythm of prayer. Thanksgiving. Spending time thanking Jesus for who he is and for all that he has done. And then finally, supplication. In Philippians, that passage we just read, it says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. The word here, supplication, the word here for petition literally means um, to, to, to keep on asking, to petition God. The supplication word comes from the Latin supplicare, and it just means to, to pray again, to pray with passion for something, and to ask and ask again. If you haven't got used to the habit yet of praying with others, I would encourage you to do so, to spend time praying with other people. If you're not in a life group yet or a small group where that happens, then join one. And you can talk to, to one of us at the end, myself or Tom, if you'd like to join in with a small group. Find people who will pray alongside you for the things that you're praying for. In your life group, in the hour and a half that you met last week, how long did you spend praying for? 35 minutes? 40 45, three, 
one and a half, none. Commit to it. Prayer and petition. It's about asking God with and alongside other people to be informed about what we're praying, to be inspired by those that we pray alongside, to be in sync with others as we pray. It is that calling out thing. And let me just say this about praying with petition. Experience tells me that most of us count ourselves out from this because we think that petition is the realm of the expert. It's the realm of the ordained or the prayer warrior. I always used to worry in, in one of the churches I was in when they kind of described some people as prayer warriors because I thought, what, what does that make me? Kind of a prayer donut or a, you know, kind of a, a prayer numpty. You know, I thought maybe I should get that t-shirt or a, um, you know, a prayer mug maybe. You know, what is it? What, is it, what does it make me? We're all called to petition. And it's not that difficult to pray and to keep on asking. In fact, Jesus, when he told the story in Luke 18 of the persistent widow, he, at the beginning of that, Luke says, Jesus told them this story so that they would learn to pray and not give up. And then he tells the story of the persistent widow who goes to um, harangue a judge, basically, to, to give her justice. And that story isn't about the reluctant judge, actually. It's about the persistent widow. To pray and never give up. And for many of us, I think, we would recognise that thought that, you know, we pray for lots of things over lots of years and some of them have yet to happen. What do we do with our prayers when they aren't or they seem to not be answered in the way that we hope for? I tell you what we do is we share it with others. We stand with other people and we say, do you know what, I've been praying for this for the last 15 years or 15 weeks or whatever it is, and nothing seems to be moving yet. And people then say, God, I've had something of that experience as well about this in my life. I'll join you in praying for you. Why don't you join me in praying for me? We're in praying for this thing that I'm praying for. When we share it, we start to realise that we're all in the same boat. And that we need each other to petition for and alongside one another in the things that we're praying for. This week in my own life, I've, I kind of get, gave up a little bit on prayer within the context of my sort of wider family. With a particular situation with somebody in a particular um, difficulty. And I'd kind of given up praying for it because nothing seems to have changed. And then I saw... I was, what was I speaking on in a couple of weeks' time? Prayer and petition. And I was like, oh, in fact, I wasn't due to speak on this subject tonight. I was due to speak on prayer and contemplation last week. And then Tom nabbed it and said, I think I should be, I, should, I feel like I should talk about it. And I kind of knew he was right, but I was thinking, no, Tom, you cannot have that talk. I want that talk because you can have the one that I feel even less equipped to speak about. And yet, in the course of this last week, there's been a particular situation that I've sat down, taken time every day to just pray into. In as unhurried way as I can, just to spend time with, with the Lord, in doing exactly what I've been saying tonight, to, to adore him. Lord, I love you. You're good. You're, you're amazing. I know you have the best uh, at the core of your heart for me. To spend time confessing, Lord, I've messed up in some of these areas. Thank you for your forgiveness. To thank him for all that he's done and all that he's at work doing. And then to pray specifically for the person and the situation that I was being confronted with. And it, it is amazing what God has done inside of three days in transforming uh, a, a situation and a, uh, a person. God is at work. It's not complicated. We are praying with him, partnering with him, and asking him to do those things 
that he wants to do. It's not that God is reluctant to give. He just wants partnership and a conversation with you and I. And even more so, he wants a conversation with you and I and others together as we pray. So this week, what about a heads up and hands open moment to pray for those things that you are praying for? To, for those things that you've forgotten about or that God seems to have totally ignored you on. What about taking the risk of saying to somebody else this week in your life group or small group or wherever you happen to be to say, do you know what? I've been praying for this thing and it doesn't seem to be shifting. Nothing seems to be happening. I have no sense of things changing at all. And to stand alongside each other and say, why don't we pray? for that it is amazing what god does there is power in prayer you have been given far more authority than perhaps you have taken for yourself you've left it to somebody else the more experienced christian or but actually as you pray god is at work he's given you authority to pray with faith to make the impossible things possible. And the more we stand alongside others to pray those kinds of prayers, the more we will see transformed in our own lives, in the lives of the church, in the lives of our community. Every single revival that's ever happened starts because a bunch of crazy people in small numbers got together to pray. And as people pray, people come to faith. In fact, nobody comes to faith unless there is somewhere prayer going on. People praying for others to get to know Jesus. That is how God works because he partners with people like us. If we don't do it, if we don't pray, who will? Who will? When we pray and we ask, we keep on asking, God will do so much more than we could ask or imagine. And if you don't believe me, check out again Philippians 4. As we adore him, we confess where we've got faults. We thank Jesus for who he is and for all he has done. And then we pray prayers of petition, supplication, acts. Maybe we can use that as a little pattern for praying in this week up ahead.